This video will take a deep dive into how to optimize the brand new 2024 Highland Tesla Model 3 performance for both acceleration and efficiency. If you aren't interested in the details and just want to hear the relevant information quickly, then I will state that information now. After that, I will go into more details about this information. First, I want to clear up some things Tesla, or more specifically Musk, has just simply lied about. The 2024 cars are absolutely called the Highland Model 3 by Tesla, despite what Musk has claimed. Here is the proof that internally they refer to this car as the Highland Model 3. Also, the 510 horsepower spec is just simply a lie. That isn't remotely close to what the battery or even the wheels produce in this new car. It is way higher than the 510 horsepower spec they give. The car produces close to 615 horsepower at the battery when optimized. More on that later. My best time for 0 to 60 miles per hour was 2.91 seconds without subtracting rollout, or 2.71 seconds with rollout subtracted in the new car. My best 0 to 60 mile per hour with my 100% stock 2022 Tesla Model 3 performance was 3.23 seconds without subtracting rollout, or 3.04 seconds with rollout subtracted. The new car is almost one third of a second quicker 0 to 60 miles per hour than the older car with this Panasonic battery. Tesla claims that the US based cars can do 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds with rollout subtracted. In reality, they can do it in 2.9 seconds without subtracting rollout. This car really should be listed as a 2.7 second 0 to 60 mile per hour car. It is capable of doing that on a regular basis. My best quarter mile time with the new car on Draghi was 10.78 seconds at 126.96 miles per hour and 10.75 at 126.16 miles per hour for the track slip. Draghi marked it invalid, but it was in the same lane of the same track that all of my other valid runs come from. I had done 11.43 at 117.67 miles per hour with the 100% stock 2022 Model 3 performance in the same lane of the same track a couple of years ago. This new car is about 0.65 seconds quicker in the quarter mile and about 9 miles per hour faster in trap speed. That is a gigantic improvement. Probably the biggest difference in the new car is the 60 to 130 miles per hour time. My best was 8.49 seconds for 60 to 130 in the new car, but it was slightly downhill. I had an 8.62 for 60 to 130 miles per hour that was valid. The old car only managed an 11.11 for 60 to 130 miles per hour, and that was with over 200 pounds of weight reductions, and it was severely downhill. In fact, my 0 to 130 mile per hour time with the new car is pretty close to the 60 to 130 time with the old car. Let that sink in for a minute. Everyone knows that I use the sexy buttons in the test logic display to monitor temperatures and optimize the performance of the car. Both of these devices work perfectly in the new car. I saw as much as 461 kilowatts or 627 metric horsepower for a max discharge value with the new car after supercharging to 100%. However, I only had a 459 kilowatt or 624 horsepower max discharge value when I actually made my quarter mile passes. The car can go even faster than my best times so far. The test logic device gives me a rolling dyno horsepower graph for every quarter mile pass I do. This data is actually better than a standard dyno because I get horsepower numbers from zero all the way to my top speed. Dynos typically are not set up to handle large amounts of low speed torque, so you'll often find that they can't go full power with an EV on a dyno till higher speeds. However, the rolling dyno horsepower numbers I get are at the battery, so there are losses in the motors and single speed transmission after the battery. Power in the battery is like saying power in the gas for an ICE car. The insane mode does heat the battery, but not to absolute optimal temperatures. I typically see about 100 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit for battery temperatures when I leave it in insane mode. That is much better than the old car that wouldn't heat the battery at all unless you triggered preconditioning. However, you really need to get up to above 120 degrees Fahrenheit for true optimal performance in the new car. I preconditioned for 7 minutes before my first run and had the battery up over 120 degrees Fahrenheit with a full charge. The new car can almost hit the max discharge value in real time output. I saw 457 kilowatts or 613 US horsepower of real time battery output with the new car at 47 miles per hour. The old cars with the Panasonic battery would not go above 436 kilowatts or 584 horsepower, and I often would only see about 429 kilowatts or 575 horsepower at about 50 to 55 miles per hour with my old car, even with everything optimized. The new car will sustain max horsepower much longer too. The old car would do max horsepower from about 43 to 57 miles per hour. 
Then power would drop off quickly after that. The new car hits max power at about 47 miles per hour and then sustains close to that number all the way through 88 miles per hour where it slowly begins to drop off after that. For everyone who has seen Back to the Future, you might wonder if this is just a coincidence that power drops off at 88 miles per hour. Holding a higher maximum horsepower for longer is what really makes the new car so much better than the old car with the Panasonic battery. The new car holds near constant power for 41 miles per hour, while the old car held a lower value for only 14 miles per hour. In the US, the new car just sustains power for much longer. However, there's some evidence now that the new Model 3 performance cars in the rest of the world are severely limited by their battery. Bjorn tested a new Model 3 performance and the max discharge value was only 406 kilowatts or 552 horsepower. That is way below the previous generation cars. Some tests have shown that it can do the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour sprint in 3.26 seconds without rollout subtracted and 3.10 seconds with rollout subtracted. That meets the 3.1 second spec Tesla claims, but my US based car does 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.05 seconds without rollout subtracted and 2.86 seconds with rollout subtracted. That really is a huge difference. I raced in an 11.0 quarter mile class this last weekend. I actually had to slow the car down considerably just to avoid breaking out or going too fast for the 11.0 class. I ran three consecutive 11.0 passes at less than 70% state of charge, and I had to use track mode to cool the battery down because the announced track temperature was 150 degrees Fahrenheit that day. This car is capable of doing an 11.0 quarter mile all the way down to about 50% state of charge if the battery is warm enough. Without warming the battery, you can easily do an 11.0 quarter mile with less than 70% state of charge. That is much different than the previous Model 3 performance cars. In previous Model 3 performance cars, switching the stock Uber Heavy wheels for lighter 18-inch wheels made a measurable difference in straight-line acceleration. I typically saw at least 0.08 seconds improvement for 0 to 60 miles per hour when using 18-inch wheels that weighed about 10 to 11 pounds less than the stock Uber Turbine wheels. The new wheels weighed 48.4 pounds for the front wheels, 235, 35, 20 tires, TPMS sensors, and all of the aero pieces that come on the wheel. The back wheels weighed 49.8 pounds with the 275, 30, 20 tires, TPMS sensors, and all of the aero pieces that come on that wheel. The aero pieces are a little over one pound. My 18-inch T-Sportline TS5 wheels with 235, 45, 18 Hankook Ion Evo AS tires weighed 47.4 pounds. The wheels themselves are about a pound or two lighter than the new 20-inch stock wheels, but my ultra-efficient tires weigh about two pounds more than the stock Pirelli summer tires. Overall, I couldn't discern a difference in acceleration with 18-inch wheels and all-season tires versus the stock 20-inch wheels and summer tires. I don't think the wider rear tires actually help that much for straight-line acceleration. Yes, my all-season tires were fighting traction on my quickest passes, but it didn't appear to actually slow me down, even with the all-season efficiency compound. A lot of people ask me why I took the staggered 20-inch wheels and summer tires off and switched to the 18-inch square setup with ultra-efficient Hankook all-season tires. The answer is that I had a 450-mile trip the next morning after I got home late at night from the track. I didn't want to drive the long distance trip on the fragile 20-inch wheels and inefficient summer tires, so I just decided to go to the track with the all-season tires. It didn't seem to slow me down, so I don't think the stock wheels are actually necessary for straight-line acceleration. That being said, I'm not saying that everyone should put all-season tires on the Model 3 Performance. For cornering at the car's limits, the stock summer tires will be significantly better. If you want max cornering performance, then the stock wheels and tires are not a terrible option if you don't want to spend some money to get a dedicated track wheel set up. However, I have to drive long distances without stopping to charge, so I have been trying to optimize efficiency while still maintaining the straight line performance. I did controlled testing around a 25 mile loop that starts and stops at the same place. I tested both chill and insane mode around the 25 mile loop. I did 230 watt hours per mile at 59.8 miles per hour average GPS speed in chill mode and 228 watt hours per mile in insane mode with the 100% stock setup. Once the battery temperatures get up to temperature, it takes almost no energy to maintain the insane mode temperature, especially on hot days like this summer. In those cases, chill, standard, work, and insane mode offer almost identical efficiency. However, in colder temperatures, insane mode certainly could decrease efficiency because it has to expend more energy heating the battery. I leave my car in insane mode all the time because it is relatively warm where I live. 
If I lived in a colder climate and efficiency was my number one priority, I might utilize standard or chill mode if I absolutely needed every mile of range I could get. With my 18-inch wheels and 235-45 18-inch Hankook Ion Evo AS tires, I achieved 192 watt-hours per mile with a 59.8 mile per hour GPS measured average speed. That is the second best result I have ever achieved on my 25 mile loop test. The best was 191 watt hours per mile with a Model 3 rear wheel drive on 18 inch Michelin efficiency tires. It is really amazing to get this kind of efficiency with a car capable of running 10.75 in the quarter mile. I have other videos I'm going to be doing with the car in the coming weeks. I want to do a range test with it and see if I can go over 350 highway miles without charging. I also might go back to the track with the car gutted and see if it will run 10.5 in the quarter mile. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.